Hi, I'm Carrie Grange. I am the owner of Skinny Pants, which is a brand campaign agency. And I do consulting work helping launch new brands and campaigns for Guthy Ranker. And I'm very excited to be invited here today by Francis Mazur and the Mazur Group to talk about direct-to-consumer media and using it to engage the customer in this new media landscape. Um, the Mazur Group is a highly respected and regarded um, um, recruiting agency and it, here in Los Angeles and in the beauty industry and I think a really terrific resource for networking and bringing people together and so it's just a very exciting opportunity to be here um, meet so many other uh, men and women in the beauty industry and learn from them and, and share um, my experience as well and I'm really excited to be here and to be a part of this group. I think the smart brands, the progressive companies are the ones who are staying who are on the pulse of that and who are staying relevant um, to those consumers. What's exciting about direct response is you, you're requiring your customer directly, right? So instead of in a retail environment where you're kind of having to guess and wonder, you know, like you know what, you know, what, what activity their, their customer is responding to, what transactions they're going to make. You can deep dive into your database and know that the customer who purchases, you know, this lip gloss is most likely to purchase this skincare cream. You know the value of your different customers, you know how you're going to market to each of them differently. Um, what I would like to talk about a little bit today is I kind of consider that a little bit old school direct response marketing um, because that's, that's that's really a lifetime value-based model. And I'm not dissing that because we're not running a charity here, right? We're all in the business of making money. So we want to optimize the lifetime value of our customer. But I think the new way of doing it is taking that a step further. And I got to go to my slide for it. <laughs> and use your database to engage your customer. And I think that's, a, that's an opportunity for all of us is how do we not just have a database you know, to optimize it from a revenue standpoint, but how do we use it to engage our customers? Because at the end of the day, if we can own the hearts and minds of our customers, and if we can build trust with them, they're more likely to make a purchase, they're more likely to tell their friends about us, they're more likely to repurchase and be loyal to us, they're more likely to feel good about us. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. And you could talk about this far more than I could. <laughs> I'm sure listening to you. That's, yeah. So, um, so, but I love that we have someone who understands consumer psychology. And so that's where new media to me is very interesting because when we talk about, you know, direct to consumer, we always say, you've heard the saying, your database is your gold mine, right? Your database is your gold mine. Like you really want to work this and um, credit card companies are great at, at making their database a gold mine. Casinos are great at making their database their gold mine. Um, but I think the new mindset, the new adage should be your customer is your gold mine. So how do you own the hearts and minds of your customer? And I think that's kind of the relevant conversation, whether you're a direct response marketer or you're in a traditional retail. But I think, I think those of us who are in direct response, and most of us are anymore who are on the brand side of things, because even if you're not doing an infomercial, if you're selling online and they can purchase directly from you, you're a direct response customer. I mean, who gets a daily email from Neiman Marcus? I do, shop now, 75% lunchtime rush. Like, you know, but because people understand that, that consumers are not only consuming content differently, they're shopping differently. So what I, what I like to think of is how, if, if you want, if your customer is your gold mine, um, it, it, then you're acknowledged, and you can acknowledge that your customer is now calling the shots, right? It used to be B to C, business to consumer. Um, Really, it's C to C now. It's customers selling to customers. And I feel like my computer's playing a video. Now it's customers selling to customers. So how, how do we then stay relevant to that customer? And I think the really successful brands are the ones who figure out how to change with the way they're consuming information, adopting to technology changes, and changing their business models accordingly. I have one customer who I work with, a client who I work with, who's just kind of like, well, this is, our, this is our business model. This is our business model. And I'm saying, but your customers aren't responding anymore. But this is our business model. So you need to find a new way you know, to push them down this funnel but they're not going to go down that funnel. They're just going to choose a different brand because if you're not going to be available to shop where your customer is most likely to make a purchase, you're no longer relevant to them and that's not truly a customer-centric model. So I think it becomes missional for brands um, where your business model 
um, I think the most successful business models are the ones who are responding to the changes in consumer behavior and, and are staying relevant to the customers and where they're likely to receive information and where they're likely to make a purchase. And that's going to vary from brand to brand. Beachbody is a great example, right? Because you're selling you're selling, if you talk about the fitness side of things, you're selling lifestyle, you're selling health, you're selling wellness. Well, you can go to Beachbody, you can buy a Beachbody product, but you can also get a good fitness regimen or learn about nutrition or find a support group. There is a, there is a lifestyle connection. So, so really, so that's perfect. So really your business model determines what types of interactions your customers will have, right? You know, can they buy direct from your mobile application? Do they have to track you down in a brick and mortar? Do you have in-house customer service reps? Or are you sending them to a third party experience? Um, and I think that's how a lot of brands have found themselves into direct response today, so they can have that direct engagement with a customer. But I do believe that direct to consumer only has its full value when you're truly customer centric in your mission. And that's gonna change from brand to brand to brand. So for you with just fab, really, well, you're talking to a customer like me, right? It's a person who wants, they want fashion tips and advice. They probably want to connect with other fashionistas and get ideas. Um, I love a website called netaporte.com. I don't know if any of you are familiar, but you go there, netaporte.com. It's like netaporter, net except it's a play on pret But But... Um, but you go there and it's, it'll be a customized experience. They create a lot of editorial content. Um, if you highlight a product that you like, it'll, it'll show the model fully merchandised in an outfit. Then you can click to the other pieces in the outfit. I will go there sometimes to decide what to wear. I have a meeting, I own a blazer that kind of looks like this. How do they dress it? So I don't just shop from there, but it becomes, it becomes a resource for me and now there's a sense of community around that. So what does it mean to be um, customer centric? I think a lot of us say we're customer centric because um, we, we say we love our, you know, we love our customers. So like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? We just love them and we want to develop pretty products for them and we want them to like it back. But there's really, there's no give in our relationship. So we love you, so we buy this from me. Well, that's not really, that's not a relationship, that's not an engagement strategy, that's not the way to capture the hearts and minds of your customer. So how do you, how do you give to your customer? There's a lot of ways. It can be through editorial content, right? It can be through creating a forum, you know, if you're dealing with like an acne problem and people need emotional support or a weight loss product and people want to create community around that. But it can be in other ways. My net porte example, it's, it's IT. Man, they invest in information technology. Zappos invests in information technology, right? They're, they they have a huge IT investment. So when I go to shop from there, it's gonna be easy for me to find the product that I want. It's gonna be easy for me to navigate the site. It's going to be easy for me to order and enter my ordering information in a secure environment. I'm gonna have a positive order experience. It's gonna be easy for me to return my products if they don't fit or if I don't like them. So, and a lot of companies will say, oh, we're customer centric. They're actually kind of afraid to do all of those things. It's costly to invest in your IT. Um, often when you're having a multi-channel environment, you're having to prioritize your IT among a lot of different channels who are all vying for IT's attention. Um, at, at Murad, actually, you, you know, we, it was a multi-channel environment, and we had a lot of channel conflict, and I'll give you a great example of it. We had, we profiled one of our customers once, and Susie. Susie watched an infomercial for an anti-aging skincare line. She then went to our website, and she did a regimen builder. She got her recommendation from the regimen builder. She called our customer service department, so talk through this to get the advice. She went to Sephora and made her purchase. And then she returned a product that she didn't like, but she returned it back to customer service. Now, I was responsible for all of those touch points except Sephora. I wasn't overseeing retail then. So I had the expense of the infomercial media. I had the expense of the digital website. I had the, I mean, I was responsible for the P&L, right? I had the expense of the customer service call, and I had the expense of the return. But the customer had a beautiful brand experience. The customer is channel agnostic, right? They don't know. So the question, or I think the challenge for brands is how do you facilitate that truly positive customer experience? And you'll have this as you continue to grow, right? Where 
they don't know that they hit different people's budgets. <laughs> and, you know, so so how do you create an environment in a growing organization? You pro you guys probably have this at Beachbody and and just Fab, where you go, okay, an expense might hit here and a sale might hit there, but the customer experience needs to be seamless across the board. How do you foster that? And then and then in a way that really benefits the company. Well, we did it by engaging the customer, right? We were where she wants to purchase, where she's most likely to make a purchase. We were also where she was most likely to consume information and make a purchase decision. And we were more where she, we were able to facilitate a return. And they were all in different locations. So, um, so I think that's an example of truly being a customer-centric organization. Um, and, and, that's, and that's, you know, that's, that's hard to do. But there are obvious benefits to the business model.